Hello there. Well, today's session is all about strengths, how to recognise them, how to use them, and how to get them across in your CV and interview. So with me is the master of strengths, strengths coach James Ease from zerolife.com. And um, James and I will be talking a little bit about, about strengths and how you can use them. So before we uh, delve in, James, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? And your strengths. It's a very grand introduction. Thank you for that. I last year I'd had a, a total burnout in role, and after spending some time out, I thought to myself, "What do I really want to do? What, what over the years, I figured out it wasn't it wasn't sort of building pipelines and making sales, finishing projects, and it was all about people I'd worked with and their potential, helping others develop, figure things out. So I took the decision to, rather than just being one of those informal coaches that everyone goes to for advice, I would get into proper coaching. So I went through Gallup's Certified Strengths Coaching Process, which I completed in the summer. And I'm about to go live with my website to help other people figure out who they are, what their strengths are, and then how to direct those to improve their performance and uh, f uh, have a more happier life, I suppose you could say. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So strengths are an, an, it's an interesting concept in that um, I think uh, a lot of us were brought up not to brag about our strengths or not to show off, um, but actually recognizing and owning and sharing what your strengths are is actually quite important in today's job market, isn't it? Yes, you could almost say that from a young age, we're almost brought up to look at weaknesses. Mm. You, you bring home your, your report card and one subject that's not doing particularly well, that might get the focus. Yeah. And it's, I mean, we all have, if we're lucky, some kind of performance review, and it's often we're looking at things to improve, things to look at, rather than it be, you're really good at this, let's focus on that. And I think in, the, in a job market, which is particularly at the moment, you could probably say it's a bit more competitive. You might have to stand out a bit more. We may not actually be meeting someone face to face. It may be we have to do more selling within a CV, a covering letter, on a Zoom call as well. And it's, I think, with your strengths, it's it's often how is this person going to help me in the role I'm recruiting for, and can they demonstrate that? Do they have the right strengths? And how would they apply those? So I think it's, yes, we're, we're kind of, the English are particularly not very good, are they? It's mm. selling themselves. I've, I was fortunate to work in the States for two, three years, and I found it very different in that you're brought up much better in how to, how to sell yourself, how to present yourself, show what you're good at, and... I just think it's something we can catch up with. It's not something that the Americans have a monopoly on and uh, <laughs> we can all figure out our strengths and present them in a way that I don't think you've got to be banging a drum or coming across as some big head. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. So you said we can all figure out our strengths and then present them in, in a in a way. So what's, let's look at the first part of that, figuring out our strengths. So obviously um, you use StrengthsFinder. Um, what are the other ways that people can, can find out their, their strengths? There may be, that there are certainly be other tools out there in the marketplace. It may just be something that you've, we, we sometimes don't necessarily consciously go out to figure out its strengths, it's through trial and error, it's through a number of different jobs, it's feedback we get from managers, it could be customers. You were really good at X, Y, and Z in that scenario. And I think part of it is actually recognizing 
from a role, perhaps if you've lost a role, perhaps you're looking for the next role, what have I achieved in previous roles and what was it that I was actually doing or using that was a strength that I can take forward into the mm -hmm. next role? It doesn't necessarily have to be a like for like role swap. I think it's a way of saying, well, here I was very good at communicating, here it was project management, this was my analytical abilities. And it may involve not just your own self-reflection. I find it useful actually to, to talk to others, mm. particularly if we're not very good at selling ourselves. I found support over the years to say, I've written my CV. What do you think? Am I on, on the money? And then usually the feedback is you're totally underselling yourself. Here's what I think you're good at. And I've actually done exercises where I've gone out to my peers or people I've worked with, managed friends and family to get their feedback to say, I'm going out to market to find a new position. What would you say my strengths are? And sometimes people know us yeah. better than we think they do. So it's a more informal way of actually discovering how you're perceived as well. Because I think we can have strengths without um, taking into account how does that come across from other people that I work with or that I manage, etc. So, yeah. No, I agree. And I think also when we look at job roles that we've had, um, we have a tendency to concentrate on sort of hard skills, don't we? Things that we can do and, uh, you know, asking those friends and colleagues around us helps fill in some of the soft skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you are always warm and easily, you know, very easy to approach or you're very patient and things like that. Things that, that might not necessarily pop up to us if we're just looking at a job role. Yes. So I agree, asking people around us is a really good idea. It doesn't have to be a formal 360, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. And it's, in effect, it's, if you, th the way I often view jobs is there's a lot of interaction with human beings, whether it's a customer, whether we're linking to management, colleagues, other stakeholders that we're dealing with. Um, what have I done in previous roles? And what have you seen me do where I've excelled? And that's, mm -hmm. it, it's a simple exercise. It, it can be a bit humbling in many ways, what people come back with. But I think understanding that when looking to a next role, it gives you something that goes beyond the usual of, you know, I'm great with Microsoft, the Microsoft Office suites or this particular CRM system or really great in Excel or whatever it might be. It's, it goes beyond those, um, the, the sort of, well, I'm trying to think what you'd call them, strengths that go on CVs that I'd almost say are a, a given or a, a sort mm. of, you know, the fact you can use Microsoft Word, etc. I'd expect that from any, anyone now. The fact you're punctual, you've got good time management, I'd expect that from everyone. So it's, what's something that brings you to life that can be used in a role where someone will say, I could see how that would work in this next role. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose the other thing to know that, you know, with your strengths, actually being able to um, give an instance, give an example of you using those strengths would be a good thing to have up your sleeve. Yes. Both for your CV and for the interview. So obviously, um, competency-based interviews are very strengths orientated, aren't they? So for anybody that doesn't know what that is, could you tell us a little bit about what a competency-based interview is? So if a company does things, often hiring is done on a kind of basis of, I like this person, I could see myself going to the pub with them after work. Mm -hmm. But a good example I could give is the police force. So I work with the College of Policing and they have a very structured competency-based framework where they have a set of competencies which link to values and behaviours that they want to see exhibited by 
those that work within the police force, but that they want candidates to show during the interview process. So it's very much a case of if it's say serving the public, what what kind of example? Could you tell me a time when you were looking out for other people, you were helping others, and you weren't just looking after your own interests? So they're trying to gain to learn more about you effectively. But then with the story that you tell, you're exhibiting the right values, the right behaviors that link to the competency framework that they're looking to hire against. And I found, I think it's a fairly common model, isn't it? The star model of answering a question of, well, here was the situation, S, the task was, da 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 da, da. these were the actions I took, and these were the results that I got. And I found that useful in my own interviews to be able to think beforehand, what are they actually looking for? What might they ask me? And have I got any stories in my previous roles that I can bring my strength into it, but bring it to life with a story where I can show them that I'm displaying the right values, the right behaviors, and that in using my strengths, I actually create some form of positive results, whether yeah. it's helping customers, growing revenue, saving money for the business. And I think that's commonly I've seen on CVs in the past when I've been in positions of as a hiring manager that we, we often tend to be, and I've been guilty in the past, we focus too much on tasks that we do. So within this role, mm. I did, um, I communicated with customers, I, I invoiced, I managed schedules, but that's not really showing the hiring person that this person is displaying the values, the behaviors, and they actually get things done. So you could, not just within an interview, but within the CV, share some of those experiences as well, yeah. using my superior communication skills I turned around two key accounts that were that we were losing re-established rapport they didn't leave us and we ended up growing their accounts by x percent and it's something that you think hmm, okay I'd like to meet this person if it's from a CV perspective or they really described that scenario very well and I can see how that links to our values and the types of people we're looking to hire. Yeah, yeah. And I think I would add to that. Um, so for instance, uh, recently um, was, was working uh, with a company on competency-based interviews and uh, we were looking for people who were, you know, were able to make decisions. And one of the questions was, uh, tell us about time when, you know, you made an important decision, which I think is a quite a common question for interviews. And a lot of people came up with deciding to go to university, which is it's one of those bland things that you mention. You know, it, it's just not, yes, okay, it may have seen maybe a big decision, but it it's, doesn't make you stand out enough. Um, so I think, yeah, yeah, with those stories, those results that you achieved, um, you know, think about how you can make them stand out um, actually in the interview, having a good story around it, um, it makes it more interesting for the interviewer as well, doesn't it? It does. And it's, it, what you say about standing out is if we're much more of a, in this role I did X, Y, Z, and they're all tasks. If we're looking at 20 different people who've had very similar roles and they're all on a task-based list within that role all that's really changed is the the name at the top of the cv mm. nothing, nothing yeah. really jumps out at me to say i like that it's a bit like uh, i suppose the the joke of looking through netflix what should we watch tonight that little the snapshot of of each thing and you say oh i like the sound of that one let's, let's put them on the watch list and this one looks good and i view that as well a bit like cvs if nothing stands out, 
but someone's really thought about it, brought a story to life. More often than not, I think someone would say, I like the sound of that, let's mm -hmm. let's get them in. They, they've clearly got something done, they've got some aligned values. And I think that makes it a big difference. Yeah, yeah. I think also from the interviewee's point of view, the person looking for the job, if you know what your strength set is, you know, you know that you, you know, you're great at communicating, you're, you know, you work well on a team, you're warm, you've got great customer service, and you're looking at job ads, and they, they're saying things like um, attention to detail and, you know, excel and working alone and things mm. and it just helps you discount them doesn't it because they're not your strengths um, and earning money aside um you know i think it we will all be better off if we end up with, with positions that play well to our strengths yes so on, yeah on on that um the thing about work that plays well to our strengths what do we do about our weaknesses do we because there's always that question isn't there in interviews that oh, what what you know what's your what's your biggest weakness when it comes to work it's it's a funny one my, the, the joke answer is obviously my my biggest weakness is anything linked to cake or chocolates but <laughs> yeah. but that doesn't always go down well depending on who's doing the interview and i find it's I think the scenario with weaknesses is if we're really not good at something, then obviously it's what, exactly what you just mentioned. I shouldn't be going for such roles or this is where you work out. I've got team members who could do something for me. Um, I could outsource it. I could delegate it. I could. However, I think there are examples where being aware of your strengths so let's say, for example, I have great communication skills. So I'm really good at the written word, writing to customers, talking on the phone, meeting people face to face. There's a warmth there, we build rapport very quickly. But then let's think about COVID. Mm. So I could probably count the number of people I've met in the past few months on one hand if that, then they were probably part of my bubble. So all of a sudden, lots of people have had to move online. So we've got to chat on Zoom. Maybe interviews are happening by Zoom. I'm not actually meeting a real person. And let's say I'm someone who's not particularly, I don't, oh, I don't like being on camera. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't like seeing my face. And I'm a bit conscious about it. I'm a bit nervous, but put me on the phone put me in, front, in the room in front of somebody and I excel. So there is a weakness, but in effect, our strength is communication. So that I just view as a natural progression of it's a new skill. You're learning some knowledge about a new system, a new way of communicating. And it's just then a case of it's something I've worked on. And I found actually in interviews, rather than give the usual the other usual bs line is often time management yeah is about on and you think oh come on really i but work actually, too hard I, <laughs> I work too hard i'm a perfectionist yeah uh, they're all they all come out but i, I think it, i found people have responded to something you genuinely recognize so i i'm very conscious on camera and I admit that I've, I'm more nervous. I'm not as, not as warm and relaxed, but I've been working at it for six months. I think I actually, in one interview, I, I thought I don't want to give them some BS answer. And I'd said, well, rather than give you a BS answer, I want to talk to you about something I have worked at. And from the age of about 17, 18, I'd struggled with self-confidence not particularly confident, but things like playing rugby, getting out to traveling on school trips to go to other countries, learning languages. I've moved to other, to work in other, in other continents. And over the years from getting out of my comfort zone, trying new things, taking on more responsibility, that's helped me to 
be much more self-aware and gain greater confidence. So where I am today is a very different person. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it might feel a bit, a bit risky in some ways. It's almost, oh, can I say that? Because people might then say, well, I'm sure I was asked the question, do you, would you feel confident enough to take on this role that we're setting? And I said, well, yes, I wouldn't be here otherwise. And I think you can see from my CV, because I've put in all the stories, the results, mm. I can show you from other roles, I'm ready for this, this opportunity. And I got the job. Yeah, yeah. And I think part of that was something different, something genuinely you've recognized. Yeah, I admit I've struggled in this. I'm, I've not been good at that, but I've done something about it. Mm. And it's, I think it's a proactive way of showing I'm not 100% perfect. Nobody is. But I've done something about it and I'm still on a journey. But I think that shows more about the person than actually saying I'm not particularly good at this. It's, it's a difference of, I think, of character, of your proactive nature, your willingness to learn and, and admit. Almost that vulnerability, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Reminds me of the hero's journey. You know, you, you, you've got this, you know, thing that you have to surmount, or, or many of them, because many times it's not just one thing that you're gonna, and your self-confidence will blossom. Mm. And, and everyone loves a story. Everyone loves the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, listening to somebody's story about how they've overcome this and what they're doing and so on. Yeah, I can imagine it's a very, well, one, it's a good way to um, build rapport with the interviewers, but also to let them see another side of you. Um, I suppose another variation on, on the weakness question is, you know, what do you find most challenging, which something like that would be able to answer that question as well. Yes. So it's worth preparing mm -hmm. such answers beforehand because you know it's it's one of those probably top five questions mm -hmm. to be asked. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we've talked quite a lot about um, I suppose the mechanics of strengths and interviews and things. But going right back to the beginning when we talked about cultural upbringing and how we're not brought up to, to brag about our achievements. You know, having somebody sit there in front of you, whether it's on Zoom or, or face to face and say, tell me about something that you're, your strength or something you're most proud of. How can you do it without, um, yeah, sounding like a show off? <laughs> I think it goes back again to uh, not just, it's not just saying it. A bit like on your CV, you, you can't really just say, I am superb at communicating or nobody can crunch numbers and come to a conclusion like I can mm -hmm. using Excel and, and a variety of other tools. So it's, it's using that story where you've put it into practice. And I think that's what not just brings it to life, but it becomes, it's something that's backed up. I mean, yeah. some might argue that you could make a story up, but that's a different, <laughs> that's a different matter. They'd be able to probe, weren't they? <laughs> yes. It's, yeah. I think if you can say, I am, we use the communication example, but if you can then back that up with a story, so in my previous role, the warehouse had let me down with an order and I knew it was going to create a whole disaster with a production line. So rather than sit and wait on it, I got on the phone straight away to the customer. I liaised with the warehouse. We got a special motorbike courier to get the product out to them. So we were only six hours late. The customer was happy uh, despite initial verbal abuse. They praised my proactive nature. Um, management thanked me for avoiding a, a disaster of a scenario that could have lost us a key account. And that was literally just from communicating, being proactive and not hiding effectively. I got something done because I could see that there'd be an issue otherwise. Yeah. And I think if you present something, there's a, it reminds me of, I have a favorite author. He's an American in Italy called Grant Cardone very big in the sales space and personal mm. development and and he jokes and says if it's true it ain't bragging 
So <laughs> if you have a story with a good example of here's where I was really good at communicating or here's where I saved the company 10,000 pounds because I found a glitch in mm. some calculation. If there's a story there, well, great. I think that, that for me is um, bragging is if it's backed up to say, well, here is why I am the top salesperson in the company. Here is why uh, people want me as a consultant because I help them save money. Here is, it's that, it's, it's credibility, it's trust, it's, and it's evidence that they've stuck a flag out there to say they are good at this, this is their strength. However, they've explained that in a nice way with a story which makes it believable. And then you're almost transporting the hiring manager to say, I could actually see them mm. in our company as well, doing yeah. something similar. Yeah, especially if you pick examples that are relevant to them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you, you mentioned a word there, which I think encompasses it all, it's, it's evidence. So it's very easy to say, I'm good at this, good at that, but evidence is what people will need, yeah. Because, and I think, that, the way that differentiates you from there'll be those who are have the gift of the gab who can mm. blag their way into most scenarios but if you dig a bit deeper scratch under the surface which a, a well-trained interviewer would would do i think they'd be found out fairly quickly because mm. they don't have the evidence to back it up yeah yeah Brilliant. Well, so my takeaways from, from our session today are basically, you know, have a look at your, your, the jobs that you've just left and jobs in the past and actually decipher your achievements and what your strengths are from that. Get further feedback, people that you worked with, even friends, asking friends um, for their comments on what they think your strengths are. Um, almost like making a list, a core list or mind map of your strengths and using that to, um, when you're looking at job interviews, to sort of try and see that they mirror your strengths or at least overlap in some places. And then picking out stories, perhaps different ones for different job interviews, but that show your strengths to the best ability and evidence them. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and likewise, likewise with the weaknesses, again, turn your weaknesses into strengths. Almost, you know, you mentioned with the one that, with your example, the fact that you, you know, you did this and this about it, and da da da, and improved and so on. I mean, that's taking what what you perceive as a weakness and and showing strength, tenacity, and persistence, and um, and so on. Mm. Thank yes. you. That's good. Brilliant. So all, all the details on how to contact James will be underneath the video. But um, thank you very much for your time today, James. Thank you. Thank you for and the invite. Yeah. And let's hope that um, this helps somebody get, get their strengths ready for interview. I hope it does. Best of luck. <laughs> okay. Thanks, James.